So I decided in July 2005 to go active duty as an operating room specialist. I uh, first met Dr. Shu in 2006 in Baghdad, Iraq. Just seeing the care that he put towards helping these soldiers have the best possible outcome was very humbling to me. And later down the road, I would get that experience for him to show the care he had when I ended up on his OR table. September 13, 2009, the vehicle I was driving hit a pressure plate IED which detonated underneath me and caused vertebrae fractures, pelvic fracture, bilateral femur fractures, and my lower right leg was partially severed. His right leg had essentially a near amputation. And if he had wanted an amputation from the beginning, I think it would be very reasonable to have amputated his leg because of the nature of the injury and how severe it was. But he did not want that. He wanted to keep his limb. And knowing him, I sat down and said, this is a long road. And he had very few doubts. Three years later, finally I'm able to walk. So I honestly felt like I owed it to all the doctors, nurses, surgical techs to keep my leg and use it to accomplish something great. I know I want to do the seven summits and I know I want to do more mountains after that. In 2009, when Benjamin came back with his leg in the condition that he was, if someone told me he was going to climb mountains one day, I could have never imagined that he would climb the mountains that he's climbed to include Mount Everest. I climbed Mount Aconcagua in Argentina from December 29th until January 14th officially. Saying I've done Everest, you expect everything to be easy after that, but I really underestimated this mountain and it really took a lot for me to get to the summit, but it was worth it. Here's someone that has undergone multiple limb salvage surgeries. His entire hind foot is fused and he's able to accomplish this. I haven't actually ran in years. Things that we almost take for granted in our lives are challenges for our civilian trauma patients or people with foot and ankle fusions or other types of nerve disabilities or muscle disorders. They have a frustration and disability they can't get back to their lives. And that's where we're starting to fill that gap with the return to performance pathway here. What we did is we built a rehab pathway that built the confidence they'd be able to get back to their life's chief activities, mainly by grouping the patients together, but then number two, by targeting a high-end function, they wanted to be able to run and jump and do the sorts of things that they did before they were injured. It requires the right team. We have great prosthetists, we have great therapists, and we have really part of the team is actually our other patients. That's part of the magic that we learned in the military that we're utilizing here, where patients become their own peer support group. We're the first big civilian center to actually do this. I'm really excited to be uh, part of the Return to Performance pathway, and I know it's gonna be something challenging, it's gonna be very difficult. I'm just really looking forward to meeting individuals that are going to be going through the same thing I'm going to. We're going to get the opportunity to hang out and challenge each other. 